It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. The show, 5.45 Live. Tonight, another angle for the state in its fight against Entergy Nuclear. The Rock River Roadways get a reboot, and the 2012 legislative session comes to a close. All that and more, and remember, we do it all in 15 minutes, so make sure you stick with us here on 5.45 Live. <laughs> So many factors in play here. We have this story that's unfolding with the Public Service Board, the appeal. We talked to uh, the Attorney General a little bit about that. Um, we have these huge purchases coming up that Vermont Yankee's going to have to make. There's a slew of other uh, legislation, lawsuits. Um, how do you uh, focus your attention on all these different issues and, and keep that all in play here? Well, you know, that's one job of a governor is to be able to handle, keep a lot of balls in the air and hopefully you land a bunch of them. But this is an important one to land. Welcome back to this May 9th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. That's footage of Peter Shumlin last month when we caught up with him uh, during a rally held in favor of closing Vermont Yankee, uh, discussing there the many angles the state and private coalitions are taking to try and force the closure of Vermont's lone nuclear reactor, Vermont Yankee. And while the state prepares for their appeal of Judge J. Garvin Murtha's hotly debated ruling over the state's Act 160 legislation, today Vermont Department of Public Service Commissioner Liz Miller traveled to Washington, D.C. to testify that Vermont Yankees' 20-year license extension granted by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission should be retracted after the plant failed to obtain a renewal for their water quality certificate, a state requirement for the continued operation of any utility operating in the state of Vermont. Next, the 2012 legislative session has come to an end, thus giving the governor a perfect platform for an impassioned speech about Vermonters and their tenacity. Here's Governor Shumlin during his closing speech as the legislative session adjourned. To all of you, if we can just take a moment to reflect, and I'll keep it short, because I don't want to get back to the table. Governor, let's just take a moment we had a double shot. All right, the end of the 2012 legislative session saw, too, the grand finale for one of Brattleboro's longest-running representatives' impressive tenure. Sarah Edwards announced early last month that after 10 years of public service, she would not be seeking re-election. Here's uh, Sarah Edwards when she stopped by BCTV Studios at the beginning of this session to talk about uh, her last year and her hopes uh, for how it would go. Let's take a look. That's a dialogue, a deliberation. Exactly. We throw words around. We try to get what each other are mean, is meaning. Right, exactly. And what, what we vote on is the paper and what the, the <coughs> words say, what is in the bill. Moving on, 2011 saw the passing of many things, including that of Brattleboro's safe and sleepy hometown reputation. With high-profile violence and crime riddling the area, a group of local concerned citizens have formed a citizen watch group known as FEET, which stands for Frost Elliott Elm Triangle, determined to deter crimes of all kinds in the area. Earlier today, we caught up with group founders Robin Risky and Tim Wessel and spoke with them about the group's latest efforts to keep the downtown area safe. The most important thing to me is really just having a venue, uh, a device to get out and to meet the neighbors and to get to know each other. Next, last summer, the byways of Newfane, Vermont, caught some of the worst Irene had to offer. And while the state has fixed up the roads, local residents are now coming out in full force to add more to the repairs and to the community. Well, this part of the road in South Newfane was hit really badly by the flood. And it wiped out the road and all of the vegetation that was along the bank. So, um, so when the town and the state fixed the road, that was a great thing, but there was nothing left green, and they just kind of put up this guardrail for protection. And so all the residents want to green it up again. A piece from Luke Stafford, uh, founder of Mondo Media Works, the high-caliber downtown media film production video uh, company. He's got plenty of stuff online. Again, Mondo Media Works. He's been kind enough, Joe, to share a little bit of his video work with us as well, that uh, project Some about work. cleaning up the Rock River. All right, uh, moving on. Who gets to say this one? I think this one's yours, Joe. All right, moving on. It was one of 545 Live's first stories last year, the Wyndham County Relay for Life, part marathon, part camping trip, part fight to the death. The relay has spent the better part of a decade giving cancer survivors, their loved ones, and those who've lost friends and family to the world's most prolific disease a chance to make public their struggles and triumphs and to raise funds and awareness for the cause. Let's go. Myself, 
Central Park are here tonight to help and uh, support the people that are survivors like Christiana is. And for all the people that never know if they're going to be afflicted with any types of cancers or leukemias, that are going to need the support of other people. There's a 545 Live Rewind in Time to last year's relay that's set to kick off again this year, June 22nd and 23rd at the Brattleboro Union High School track. Last week, uh, Joe, you caught up with Peter Case. Uh, some of you out there might know him as WKBT's Fish. He talked a little bit about this, uh, what's becoming an epic event. We're looking uh, to achieve our goal of over $100,000, and how we're going to do that? Well, we're going to ask you to form a team and uh, get involved in the relay and raise some money. That's a big part of how we do things. Well, that's about all I got, Joe. Uh, thanks for joining me at the desk for another edition of 545 Live. We're going to send you out in style here, but uh, before we wrap a few notes... Um, Headroom Stages tonight is presenting the jazz songwriter Julia Berry performing at 9.30 p.m. tonight. And also, we've got tonight at 11 p.m., BCTV viewers can catch up on all the legislative madness with the finale of the state syndicated show Inside Your State House. That's full lid, Joe. All I got for our viewers out there. Thanks for checking in with us. We sure appreciate it. Uh, also, thanks to our operations manager, Velasta Papelka, who somehow puts up with us and uh, helps this show hang together. Also, our uh, new intern, Nolan Edgar. He's been slaving away getting us scripts, clips, and more. Uh, we're going to sure miss him when his uh, Leland and Gray co-op program runs out when he's done with his community service hours. That's going to be a big bummer, Nolan. Thanks to you. Uh, our content specialist, Paige Martin, who uh, did some great advising on that nice new 545 Live intro. You saw Maria Dominguez, Ian Keel. They've been getting us footage uh, all through this 545 Live process. Thanks to all of you so much. All right, for BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden. Uh, for myself and Joe Bushy, thanks for checking in with us. Thanks for watching. Night, everybody.